<laughs> Hello? Hello, I'm back. Reconnection successful according to uh, OVS. I found that my internet is a lot more unstable ever since they uh, upgraded everyone's internet to one gigabyte, basically fiber. <clears throat> it's hard to say though. Maybe it's just like the normal amount of lag. All right, so try load from path. Yeah, so I don't think we want this loading thread. But then here, we'll do ba 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 ba. <clears throat> I guess we'll just write everything here then, and then we'll have, we'll kick off a, a load model. So if data runner path begins with, so if it's a res path, then we need to just use the built-in Godot loader. Did your stream stop on your side or my side? It stopped on my side. My internet cut out for about five seconds. All right, so this should be some sort of node data. Eh. Type resource. Oh, that's that's true. Then we need to check if runner. Unable to load runner on path. All right, and if any one of these things fails, we do want to bail out early. Let's move all of this stuff back. So if path is hmm. So this might be a resource, but it's also possible it's not a resource. Let's just say that this is a node, I guess, and we'll figure it out. I guess it's just if resource is GD scripts. Well, actually, you can do R is equal to resource new if resource is GD scripts. Else, stand shy. Okay. I think that makes sense. So there's really only two code paths. This is synchronous. It's not going to be. 
running on a thread because the loading runners and the GUI should be really quick. It's just when loading models that I need to pay attention and use a thread. And then it's actually okay if the uh, it's okay if the model fails to load in, but the runner and the GUI should always load in. I think that's the that's the metric that I'm going with. File is equal to file access open path. Oh, sorry. And file access read. Is that what it's called? I'm not getting good code completion for this, so it's it's making me very nervous. And also, I would like to point out that whenever you use VS Code, Godot does not actually reload itself. So I actually need to force a reload like this. All right, so file. So if file is null. OK. Think it's fa fixed on master? It's not, because I am actually on the latest master build. Hold on. Yeah, I'm already on the latest master. That's not my public IP address. I got really nervous here. I was like, well, since when does ping like expose your public IP address? <laughs> Unless that is my public IP. But I, no, that should be just Google's IP. Solution can be just not to use the built-in editor. Do you want I like the built-in editor because the built-in editor has a really nice debugger. Or at least I like the Godot's debugger over the, the VS Code debugger. I think it's also nicer to, to be able to look at the scene tree. And stuff. I know that like VS Code has those as well. It just doesn't feel as natural. All right, I'm, I'm trying to remember. What was my, what was the thing I was doing here? Can't you load in? I, I, I'm starting to doubt myself again, so let's check. Uh, yeah, that's the exception, yeah. There's a lot of things. There's a lot of things about Godot that can be kind of weird. All right, uh, I think if I do this, right? So var file, file access, open. I thought we'll just feed in a path. We'll get around soon. Okay, so feed in a path. So we'll dot dot virtual puppet project heavy <laughs> pupper for utils app manager.gd. I think that's probably fine. And then I'll just set a breakpoint here. I don't remember if that's, well, no, you're allowed to do this. I'm pretty sure it's taking a little bit. Okay. Oh, it actually failed. Cool. Well, hold on. This is not what I wanted. I, what I wanted to check was um, the real file path. So hit me with one of these. Load. And I just got to go back. Like so. So that should give me a resource. In theory, actually, that won't give me a resource. That'll give me an error. Mm, details. <clears throat> okay, cool. Right. So file is some sort of 
object, I think. And then the, the rest of it will explode as soon as I instantiate it, but okay. Good to know. And I'm pretty sure that this is also fine. Actually, there is no readme, so it should just be the license. So what is this? Oh, okay. So because it's not a good deal of resources, not able to load it in. Okay. How did I do this in old VPupper, by the way? I know I had a solution. I don't remember what it was. <laughs> eh, screen. Default runner. Not the default runner. It was the... Oh, well, might have been the default runner. Load GLB, try load model. And then here that was in model extensions. So the old runner trait. Try load model. <clears throat> okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, no, 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 no. Wait. See, those just those are for loading Godot resources. How did I load in GLBs? Oh, this one uses the built-in GLTF loader. It's still probably fine though. Okay, cool. So actually, I don't even need this if statement. This should just be fine. So both of these are valid. which means I can do this. Just return this thing. You don't need a return value placeholder. Yeah, there we go. I think that that's pretty good. That's pretty good. So try load. We'll get rid of this. So we'll have the runner. That's one of the more important bits, some sort of node. Try load data runner path. And then var GUI, which is, again, some sort of node. We have no idea. Try load data GUI path. <clears throat> and then if. Runner is null. Wait, hold on. Fail text unable to load runner. Failing out. We'll do something very similar here. Well, I think at the very least, you would always want to have a GUI. So give me one sec. So you'll always have your GUI. So add child. Hmm, yeah, I guess wherever you put the GUI, it doesn't matter. Because in theory, the GUI should be sitting on top of a canvas item anyways, or a canvas layer, not canvas item. Add runner, and then var model thread. Here we go. So model thread starts, takes a function, and then we'll just capture. Th this is why I really like using, um, this is why I really like using lambdas, is because they can capture other variables from the same scope, which is a little dangerous. <laughs> 
It's a little dangerous, but it's also nice because then I don't need to remember to pass around values. Then it's just like, okay, where is the value defined in this scope? And then can I pull it? Which, you know, potentially is, as they say, a code smell. But at the same time, you know, not so bad. All right, let's get rid of this. It's annoying you have to make all kinds of params and stuff in Rust. Yeah. Well, I think Rust is fine. Well, in Rust, you can also capture. But in Rust, when you capture, you need to either clone it into the new scope, right? Because uh, the inner scope of a callable is, uh, I guess, considered moving the data, as opposed to Godot, which is just like, I don't know. <laughs> Let's just create new data or whatever. Who cares? <laughs> Everyone can hold on to this data. Yeah, it is definitely a code smell if you overuse it for sure. Like for example, I would say that if we're saying that any, or if we're saying that anything is a code smell, it's almost certainly this one, right? Which is, well, the init runners thread, this is gonna be a lot smaller. It only looks pretty big because I have like this big chunk here. Also check this out. Might not have noticed this, but you see anything interesting about this? Oh, geez. You see anything interesting about this? Huh? That's right. It's, I, I did a four I in, and then the output of this lambda, <laughs> which I didn't realize would work, but it's really cool that it does. Lambdas are, yeah, yeah. You could, you either use the, the weird like fence post syntax, like that. And that, that should be a Lambda. Although I, th can't you also just create a completely anonymous function and assign it to a variable? I don't know, actually. I've never tried doing like let x equal fn whatever. I guess it would make sense, though. I don't know. <laughs> Unsure. Never tried. That's sneaky, but the rest lambdas can't recurse. Yeah. Well, Godot lambdas also cannot recurse on themselves, which is why like this looks horrible, right? <laughs> So I have a fade tween, movement tween, and then I need to create these lambdas because then these lambdas need to refer to these things here, but then also themselves, right? Because I disconnect the cancels, connect them, and then disconnect them, et cetera, et cetera. Actually, no. Never mind. you don't need to recurse using this anymore. Never mind. I have, <laughs> clearly have no idea what I'm talking about. Anyways, the, uh, the big thing that I wanted to bring up was the fact that you can do a for loop off of the result of a uh, inline lambda. So I thought that was really cool, but also probably why this looks huge. Yeah. Which I guess is more of like a showcase of the fact that you can put a lambda wherever you want inline yeah i mean it is an inline lambda right because generally what you would want to do is call this i guess or define it somewhere else and then call it elsewhere whereas what i've done here right this is the lambda and then i immediately call it and then the lambda gives me an array and then i can immediately use that in the for loop <laughs> which is a bit weird It's technically inline, but it's also 20 line. Yeah, well, 
<laughs> it's in line in the for loop, <laughs> which is the important part. Let, let's let's ignore the fact that it's covers many many lines. Okay, here we want to do. I guess actually. Well, okay, hold on. Did I already close this window? No, I, I still have it open. How am I loading models? Or I guess more specifically, how am I loading VRM models? Because the VRM models are the ones that take the longest to load. All right, so I load in the loader and then I then load in, I load in the loader and then I use the loader to import the scene. Okay, gotcha. So then I need to do match data model path extension, get extension to lower. <laughs> All right. So I guess text scene or scene, I'll think about it. GLB, we'll still think about it. VRM, uh, honestly, still think about it. And then unhandled, it'll just be unhandled, so that's an error. Extension based code. Well, yeah. I mean, how else would you do it, right? So this one, we'll just call it, hit it with a load data model path parse. What do you mean? <laughs> the, the, the various loading things that you have are based off of the, the file extension, right? So if it's a Godot resource, then you can just load it. If it's a GLB, you actually have to do something a bit different. Try and parse it. Well, the only way that you know Right, the, if you want to detect if something's a GLTF model, you actually have to parse the bytes and then look for the magic header, right? And then the distinction between GLB and VRM is just that VRM is an extension to GLB. So I would need to parse it into a GLTF document and then look into the GLTF extension to see if it's VRM. So that's... Uh, that is, is just too much is not worth it basically there's no point right that's the entire point of file extensions is that you don't need to parse the entire file to know what you're loading now if the file is named incorrectly that's not my fault and I'm not going to try to parse the binary because it's just, it's not worth it. It doesn't make any sense. All right, so model, always some sort of node, but it'll be null for now. Model is equal to resource in stan in Something like that. I, I'm pretty sure that you can actually do it like pack scene. That might be more correct. Well. <laughs> Actually, you don't want to just add child model because you need it. You need to add it to the runner, which we can do here. Runner. Oh, hold on. Don't I have something here? So like runner three D. Try to set model. Yeah. Okay. Let's just think about it. Return model. <laughs> eh. 
A void function cannot return a value. That's true. No, it's a. How does where where is it? It's vrm import vrm. But then I actually think I want vrm extension. I submitted a pr against this. Actually, check this out. When I was pulling the latest version of this, for whatever reason, I keep forgetting I already have this window open. VRM add-on for Godot engine. Look at that. Oh, baby. Number three contributor. Don't say I never did anything for you. Although I'm, I'm not sure what my contributions are at this point, because a lot of it has changed. Or the contributor, yeah. The, a lot of things have changed. Yeah, two commits, 82 plus, 71 minus. Because it was mostly just like breaking out their extension stuff into separate files so that I could use it. Huh. But then they went back and then just did some bizarre stuff. Hmm. Press the button. What button? This button? The button? Where? This one? VRM add-on for Godot engine. Kono... Pe... Pa... Paku? Eh? Pake? J... Package! <laughs> ni wa VRM add-on toshite VRM00 ni... Something something shita VRM modelu no en 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 pot em pot em importer to vrm o heavy ka stam tameno script <laughs> script <laughs> Oh, I don't, I've never seen this one before. That's a very interesting looking character. Mare te imas. Anyways, that's the extent of my Japanese. Hmm. How do I... Post imports. I think I can actually... Mm. Hold on. This is VRM extension. How did they use it? Editor scene format importer. There's their import scene, but I don't want this because I can't use this in exported builds. Get extensions, import scene. Yeah, I can't use this. But I can use this. Mm, hold on. Hold on. It's very scary. I think I'm gonna do it though. Um, so runner 3D. Hold on, not here. Runner handler. So GLB should be fine. Yeah, okay, hold on. Runner handler. So we'll just use the same stuff for both. Okay. GLTF doc. Okay, so I don't need the extension. That's fine. So okay. Let me grab all of these. <laughs> Just copy and paste it. Hit me with a pass. Comment this out. I don't need this. There's no document extension. I just need base GLTF. All right. Uh, GLTF append from file. Unregister, don't need it. What is your problem? Path. Oh, that's right. Because this should be data model path states. GLTF states and then flags, I have no idea. Where do flags come from? Where did they even get it from? Flags. Oh, these flags. Import scene. I don't. <laughs> what flags are these? <laughs> Flags of some repute. I, I, I don't know what flags mean. What flags are there? Eh. 
Yeah. I know that the people that are working on this are also the ones that are They're the core maintainers, but they've also received a, a decent amount of flack for, I guess, not doing enough, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Parsing and not having an extension. What is this? What am I looking at? Info file from the given path. Okay. Config contents as byte. What the heck? <laughs> what is this? I think this is actually, isn't this technically incorrect? <laughs> it doesn't use a path now. Yeah. Yeah. But is, isn't this, this is technically incorrect. And then I'm not sure. Oh, th then this just runs through every single one of them and sees if it can parse it, right? Yeah, you know Tommel, Tommel doesn't need to start with a, a square header, right? Like you can put any you can put any thing at the very top of a, a Tommel file. Actually, a Tommel file can also just be completely standalone. So like this is valid. Yeah, so this, yeah, no, you can have a Tommel file that has no sections whatsoever. Yeah. So that that is a valid Tommel file. And then you can have like some table with key value like that. That's the easiest way to check if it's Tommel. I think the easiest way to check if anything is Tommel. Well, that's true. Godot.package does not have, <laughs> does not have a file extension. That's true. Yeah, that's that's true. Yeah, fair enough. If it has a square, then you can assume it. That's right. Yeah. Where am I? All right. I don't really know what flags I should be using. Oh, that's why I went here. <laughs> Is so I can go Godot GitHub. MLHJSON doesn't start with squares. Mm ever that's true well can't they well can't json can start with a square brackets but it would never would but it could and then yaml that's true yaml does not ever uh, so it's scene resource no it's not resource it's um what is this editor scene format is this under editor Import. Oh my god, it is under import. Oh, okay. Editor scene format importer. Im editor import plugin. It's probably this. The more C I write, the more I hate it. Uh, okay. Import. Where are the flags? String name, variant, source file. I, I just need to, I just want to know what does flags refer to? I, I have no idea. Editor import. You think um, import collada has that? Yeah, okay, get import flags. Import, eh, <laughs> really? Oh, it's these flags. It's these flags. What the heck? What the heck? I don't know. Can I just have all of them? What is this even equal to? I, I, I'll just give me the max. For, they're not, they don't have the calculation here, so I'll just do it myself. So that's one plus two plus four plus eight plus 16 plus 32 63 okay I can start with yeah well 
the the formats that you're looking for, right, for Godot.package will never start with a square, but it could start with a square. That's what I'm saying, right? Because you have either it can either be like a a JavaScript object or it can be a JavaScript list, right? JSON can. YAML is a bit nicer, but even then, technically, good YAML should start with three dashes at the very top, but not everyone does that. Yeah, so that, that's actually one of the things that I had to, to program for in the when I wrote a linter for work. Okay, I think this is probably fine. So flags, I don't know, 63. Because <laughs> I'm not sure if I have access to the rest of these. And I know I won't have access to this once it's um once I export this. But I suppose I can pre-calculate this. Hold on. Const import model import flags. So one plus two plus, isn't it three? No, it's just four. Yeah, that's right, because they're not supposed to, these are bit flags, that's right. Eight, so you should never be able to accidentally add up any of these and then come up with uh, another number. Was it 32? I'm bad at math, model import flags. I'm bad at math, which is why I'm <laughs> really should never do any addition or whatever on stream. Generated scene. What does GLTF generate scene give you? Generate scene. It gives you a node. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, so we can do that. Look at that. Oh, and actually, no, we should do model. Like so. Starts with the square, and I think it's Tom Wall parsing, give it a completely funky error. If I can check for good YAML. Well, that's good YAML. Not everyone does it, right? Like, in theory, good YAML should look like this, right? So, like, I don't know, packages. Something like that. And then you'll have, like, um, like name, whatever. Uh, I don't I don't remember the other pits. One, two, three, right? And then you'll have like package two, so name, other. Something like that. You can also just have a new line. Yeah, you can have whatever you want, right? Like YAML doesn't care. So this is technically valid YAML. This is valid YAML. This is valid YAML. This is the most correct YAML. Actually, that's not true. I believe this is the most correct YAML. But I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember. There's like a style of it that's like this. Oh, hold on. Like this. But then there's an also another one that is like that. And I don't remember what the difference is. Anyways. Having the three dashes at the top is the most correct, but it's not enforced. OK. Model thread start while model thread is alive. Get tree process frame. So what is wait? And I guess for now, let's just <laughs> add the just add it to our uh, whatever. So model some sort of node is equal to model thread 
wait to finish. Wait to finish gives you a variance. So it could also just be null. So if model is null. Uh, I think that the older I get, the, the more I dislike falsy truthy values. Yeah. So I think the only values I allow to be falsy, or I guess truthy, falsy truthy, I don't remember what the distinction between the two terms there is, but I know that there is a distinction, isn't it? Like truthy means that uh, it'll assume if it's tr something is true, if it's not sure, or if it does not have a distinct true false value. But anyways, uh, I think it's better to be explicit unless you know that you're using a Boolean. Actually, why am I doing it like this? Let's just do it like so. Because I don't want anyone else to be able to access this function. So I'm actually going to just do it here. Fail. Fail. Alert. So this will be a new function, some sort of text. So logger error text os alert text it is beautiful so i'll do fail alert I think your cut, internet cut for a bit. That's uh, definitely very possible. I haven't dropped any more frames though recently. So <laughs> I, I just go off whatever OBS says. So if you ever, actually you can't really see it because <laughs> the one, the duck is covering and then two, I have like this weird message counter. But whenever um, my internet connection goes out and I have OBS running. OBS was actually pretty good at alerting me if something went wrong. Oh yeah, what was I saying? <laughs> or I guess, uh, I don't know, what was the last thing you remember me saying? I gotta tell you, I do not remember whatsoever. All right, let me pull in the duck. I need to be very careful not to misplace the duck because <laughs> I no longer have the source files for it. All right, so let's grab this. Yeah, we'll just drop it into here, whatever. You can have the duck. Have a duck. So import VRM. We'll keep you around. Do I still need to do this? I know that this was a bug. Oh, yep, still a bug, for sure. Oh, geez. New is a coroutine. Eh, really? Also, this is wrong. I don't know why Godot does this, by the way. Ever since I upgraded my, my Godot build, now it always tries to place it on screen one, which is my upper screen. I guess uh, for, for context. Isn't it called display? Display? No? 
What is it called? <laughs> it's one of the settings. Please get out of here. No. Actually, what the heck are... What are all of those? I, I don't recognize any of those. What is it called? System? Yeah. Display, yeah. Oh, you know what? It's because this one's... Wait, no. What? I don't know. <laughs> oh, source stuck. Yes. Well... Oh, okay. I thought you were talking about the duck. Yeah, no, I, I don't think I have the Blender file for the duck anymore. Which is why I, I just have to, like, modify the GLV. So it's pretty much the same thing, because it's not very complicated. Okay. I guess that makes sense, yeah. What is what is that one? I've never seen that one, actually. So this, this means that you're taking, like, a byte character I don't I'm not familiar with this syntax though I don't really know but I guess I guess it's fine I don't know <laughs> I don't really have an opinion other than like it's probably prone to exploding But for the most part, that should be fine. All right. Give me a shot. Give me, give me a test. Ah. Oh, I see. Okay, hold on. So we can't use get tree, but we can do engine. Uh, is it not called engine anymore? Mm -hmm. Main. Eh. How do you get the main loop again? It used to be engine main loop. Did it change? Get main loop. It's not, it's not main loop, it's get main loop. Sorry. Um, I don't know if it worked or not. <laughs> oh, you know what? It probably did work. Uh, probably, question mark? No, it did not work. It actually exploded. Um, <laughs> hold on. So why did this explode? Dereference, dereference the string? Really? Can you use this GPN? <laughs> it's, it's never been... No, yeah, yeah, but isn't it's it's not it's not main loop function, isn't it just main loop in Godot three? Yeah, isn't it? Isn't it? It's just called engine main loop, isn't it? Or no? Oh, it is just get it, it is get main loop. Never mind, I'm dumb. <laughs> Luger, logger, debug, starting model. Loading GLP model. And I'm assuming it explodes here. So yeah. Start loading GLB model. And then it just kind of fails. No, the thread is finished. Eh. Oh, it's because I... I, I <sighs> I'm dumb. <laughs> I never added it. And actually, hold on. Because this has a camera, I do need to make it current. Try set model. I guess we'll just try set model. Might as well. So we'll do... 
try set model. Something like that, and then this should just kind of show up. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> yeah. And that's pretty much it, yeah. Um, it's pretty much what you need. I'm assuming it's it looks like this because it's completely unlighted, because there's no light in this scene right now. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Shadow, yeah. Where am I? Okay, so let, let's do the VRM stuff now. So, ba -ba 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 -ba. let's 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 create a new folder here, at least for te like for test models, I guess. So like three D, three D models. Perhaps they'll move the rubber duck to 3D models. We'll move to runner selection. We'll keep it like this for now because it's just convenient. Mm, then we'll grab the old Alicia model. Beep upper assets. And then we'll just grab I guess we'll create, we'll grab this. We'll just to grab that. 3D models. Okay, hold on. Uh, hold on. <laughs> hmm. Do I just want to like drop it in here? You know what? Let's just drop it in here. Gado won't be able to load it in, but that's probably fine. All right, so now for this thing. <sighs> okay, GLB, ba, 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 ba. There's no preview path, model path. So 3, 3D ENV has some ambient light, I think. Oh, I'm not sure if the default ENV has shadows enabled. I have no idea. <laughs> I know the default ENV usually is pretty bad. That's all I remember. I don't like working in 3D. It's too much math. <laughs> and math is the one of the things I'm like really, really bad at. Or maybe not math, but working with numbers is something I'm really, really bad at. All right, so just remember that whenever we're working with this, or whenever we're testing stuff, I need to do... Wait, what? Yeah, but whenever I'm working with this, I need to... Uh, hold on. I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> I distracted myself because I was like, oh, you know what? I should move on to this topic next. And then I... I don't know. I just, I just kind of uh, forgot. VRM extension. I believe that, yeah, this is just a GLTF document extension, so I can keep this around. Ba, 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 ba. Oh no, just hit me hit me with a preload. Because we're gonna be shipping this along with it. And then what is your problem? This is model path. So data model path. Like that? And then we can do you pronounce E N V E N V you pronounce gooey gooey. How do you pronounce C L I? C L I? Wait, how do you pronounce C L I? Do you pronounce it Klee? <laughs> yeah. I think gooey 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 is like one of those things where enough people say gooey that it just makes sense. <laughs> Does it call it gooey? Seal I I mean well and cuz like also gooey you like you're not going to be like oh you know my, my computer is very gooey. Like, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I suppose saying that, like, I'm going to be working, well, Klee, I don't know, actually. I don't know. Just people say, people generally say G-U-I. They, they, 
instead of saying GUI, they say GUI. But when you just have UI, like a two letter acronym, you'll just say like the two letters. CLI, I don't know how you would pronounce that. ENV, ENV, it, it doesn't really have a distinctive name to it, so it's kind of hard to hear. CLI, I don't know, like no one, no one says CLI or CLI. <laughs> It, it, it just sounds wrong. It doesn't sound correct. Let's just be real here, huh? Coal? You pronounce it coal? How do, you, how do you pronounce it? C-L-L? Coal? I've never seen that. Most people, I feel like, usually say C-L-I. Like, you would only, like, try to pronounce the letters if you're trying to troll somebody. Like, uh, yeah. Did you see the new Klee? <laughs> the new Klee I pushed? Is that Klee? CLI? <laughs> huh? I, I think like a a native English speaker could definitely pick up what you're trying to say, but it's it's, it's not very common. VRM loader is a cut. Yeah, it is custom. VRM is um, CL. You you pronounce it CLI? <laughs> yeah. Twitch chat font, yes. Yeah. Twitch chat font, it looks like CLL, but that, that makes sense. You pronounce it CLI. Yeah, CLI. If you say GUI, you're a cop. <laughs> you're an actual cop if you say GUI. And then ENV is ENV. I don't know. When I was working with Ruby, we did have uh, Ruby ENV, but I think the tool is actually cannot pronounced RB ENV, or it's actually spelled RB ENV. So I don't know. I, I've heard people say RBENV again before. RBENV. <laughs> Which I guess makes sense. It's a long word. Or you don't want to say Ruby and here. Ruby ENV. It's kind of a tongue twister. Why? Why pig if gooey? What? Yes. <laughs> I agree. What are we talking about? Ooh, we exploded. Okay. Uh, do I have... Let's turn on better logging. I don't know why the logging is so bad. Get me out of here. Go standard out. Ooh, ooh, what the heck? I guess I need to run this from a terminal then. Oh my God, there's so much garbage. GLTF. Do I just have like an old model? Converting spatial. Hmm. I might need to hop into their Discord. <laughs> might need to hop into their Discord and ask. I'm unsure. Eh. Okay. So this is GLTF documents, GLTF document. Oh, geez, what the heck? <laughs> what was that really long name? GLTF, document extension convert importer mesh. Who names these things? This is this is like big Java hours. <laughs> this is how you name Java classes. And why is this exposed to GDScript? All right, 
GLTF document. iFire names them. Hmm. You know, I've I've um I've talked to iFire before. I, I'm gonna be real. I do not understand what they're talking about half the time. <laughs> I feel like if, if you're um, if you're talking with them, you need to know like the entire extended universe beforehand. Yeah, because they were, they were trying to talk to me about uh, like media pipe, and I was like, uh, <laughs> like what are you talking about? Are we talking about like uh, like sending like VMC data via media pipe? Why? What are you talking about? And then they were like starting to insult me because they're very clearly getting annoyed. I'm like, I, I'm not following. I have no idea what you're talking about. Go on their video calls. Very understand. Yeah, I've, I've talked to them before. For... I've, I've talked to them before. Like their their English is fine. But it's like whatever they talk about, I'm just not able to follow it. Because, <laughs> like, like I said, like you need to know like their entire ex extended backstory, because there's there's a lot of things that are just assumed for whatever reason when you talk to them. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, you know, even though Discord has chat history, I'm gonna be honest. If it's not one of the first things that shows up, then it's not their dictionary, right? I would be very surprised if I met someone who has a be bigger vocabulary than I do. But like, hey Google, shut up! What the heck? Give me, give me one sec. Sorry, I'm back. <laughs> the dictionary is advanced, not English dictionary. Yeah, I suppose that's fair. It might not be English. There, maybe the encyclopedia. <laughs> the encyclopedia that they're referring to. Technical advanced dictionary. No, I, I get all that technical stuff that they're referring to for sure. I've seen a lot of the stuff that they're working with. It's just that like it, a lot of things that they talk about, they assume that you already know like the backstory, but I, I don't. <laughs> I have no idea. Like, if we're going to be talking about, you know, broadcasting, you know, face tracking data, you got to tell me, like, you know, like, why are we broadcasting it? Who are we broadcasting it to? What formats? Etc. You can't just like start talking to me about like, oh, you know, like I love, I, I love the idea of being able to like broad, you know, share data. I'm like. Eh. What do you mean shared data? That doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> what do you mean shared data? In what context? Also, the, I had to go on mute for a second. I heard my uh, one of my devices start speaking in the background. I was like, oh no, <laughs> please don't like share my home address. Let's, let's, let's just hit it with a logger here. Because I'm not sure where the error is. I'm assuming it's here, almost 100%. GLTF append from file. Yeah. That's fair. Hmm. Appended. From file successfully. Hold on. Registered extension. Generated scene. And the reason why I'm doing this instead of using breakpoints is because this is running in a thread. I guess I could take it out of the thread, but I don't really feel like it. Oh no, Google says no, so I to turn this off. Turn it back on. Does it know how to turn itself off? Oh, I think you can you can tell it to turn itself off. 
What I actually need to do is like re-register my voice because I think my my voice has maybe drifted from what it used to be. Or maybe I just talk more for my uh, my lower registers more now that I no longer have to give long speeches every day. Right, because when you're talking to an audience, you need to tailor yourself to the audience. So like a lot, most people, when they're just listening to like a deep baritone talk like this all day, they uh, it puts them to sleep. So, you, so when you're giving presentations, you actually need to raise your voice like this and talk like this in an upper register, not like this. No, the the difference is subtle, but one puts people to sleep, and then the other is I don't know, just good presentation voice. All right, bring me back here, and then overflow. <laughs> Uh, I might need to restart this with um, the console thingamajig. Mesh has targets, parsing mesh. Yeah, because I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, so it, it registered the extension, and then it's it's just here. Is it because I'm running out of memory? Question mark. I don't know. Give me one more try. One more try, please. And then we just <laughs> explode. All right, I guess we need to restart. So I'll run it from bash. What is it called, editor? exe verbose. Give me project manager, please. Oh, you're not allowed to do this. I forgot because this spawns a new process, which is, I hate that. Okay. Um. How do you point it at a project again? Gitto command line, yeah. Command line tutorial. So project, project, project. Target editor. Hmm. Start the editor and so target. So you can point it at something, so it'll do Dev virtual puppet project, the pupper for project docket. Oh, can you do that? Okay. Where is it? Debug settings, turn that off. Then I'm, I'm going to move this off screen so you can't see it, but I can see it. Some other data. Appended from file successfully. Why am I not getting, um... Eh. Appended from file. Okay, so it's, it's something with the append from file, but also... Am I stupid? Is this not how you get debug logging? I, I, I'm feeling really dumb right now. Uh, this is not how you do it. Yeah. Isn't isn't this how you do it? No. Verbose. How do you get verbose standard out? Yeah, okay, verbose. Am I am I dumb? Is this not how you do it? Yeah, because I'm still not getting any logs from here. Is this not how you do it? Huh? I guess I can just run the project. Just run me, I guess. Maybe that's not how that works. See, it only gives me the... Per I need the console logging because Godot's console logging isn't fast enough to catch up. 
Actually, isn't there, there's the, um, it generates the console thingy, doesn't it? No? Yes? Here, so bin, oh yeah, editor console, but then it's, it's using CMD, which is garbage. But maybe what I was using was not enough. Okay. Okay, appended from file successfully. So that's all I got. And then all the other warnings I don't really care about because I know that they will work. Um, okay, so it's generate scene that's causing the issue. Generate scene, bake FPS, turns a Godot engine scene node. Hmm. All right. Give me give me one second. Okay, so it's just not able to generate the scene, but it is able to at least read the file properly, which is good. Okay. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Converting spatial GLTF appended from file successfully, but then when you try to is there anything on their GitHub for this? Because this is like the most important bit. If this does not work, then there's no point. And there's no points here to even trying to port to four. Runtime, mtune, vrm export. Hmm. Did I miss something? Yeah, so. I know that these bits all work. And then this is not the problem. So it's just generating the scene. Does this work, um, I guess, outside of it? Let me import. Actually, don't I still have Godot VRM? I actually, yeah, I do still have it loaded. Okay, re-imported. Load at runtime scene. I actually don't remember if this even works. Yeah, okay, so they didn't even bother loading this in. Yeah, or well, they didn't even bother um, updating my stuff. That's fine. VRM samples, VRM loader. This doesn't even load in anymore. Hold on. To do it this way, sample scene, sample script. Yeah, no. What changed? I have no idea. Um, this is what I got. So it's able to, I guess, load everything into the GLTF state. But then when I try to generate the scene, I get a hard crash with no logs. Besides these, which isn't extraordinarily helpful. Thank you for redeeming a hydrate. Oh, baby. Hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Something that seems to be chronic is the fact that, um, like, after I survived COVID, actually twice now. I, uh, 
I don't know. I just I just need to like remember to clear my throat every like few minutes or so. Otherwise, I'll just start the joke on like the the goo, the phlegm from my lungs. Very unfortunate. Let me see. All right, let's let's grab this, and we're just gonna try this in their own thing, because maybe it's it's because of something that I'm doing, right? It's possible that it's something that I'm doing. So we'll just, well, yeah, let's just grab all of this, right? Do, 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 do. Actually, I can grab it from them. Yeah, that's. That's right. Import VRM. Actually, because this is just a sample. Hmm. Eh, all right. Sample scene. No, not sample scene. Load at runtime scene. That's correct. Load model. Something like that, I guess. And then we can just ba -ba -ba -ba, grab this, hit it with a preload. BRM extension. I believe this is just six, no, hold on, 63. Not 64, 63. <laughs> Which means that this Hit it with a load model. Can you only redeem one hydrate? You got to wait like five minutes between redeems. I believe that's how that works. I, I configured it at some point because it used to be like no limits. And then also you could redeem it as often as you wanted, which led to people just spamming it. Very unfortunate. Why does this scene look so bad? Oh, it's because this one has a world environment, huh? All right, give me your world environment. Give me your camera as well, I guess. Actually, just give me like everything that's in that scene except for whatever. Why does this look so bad? Directional light. Yeah. Oh, it says I can only do it once a stream. Did, did I change it to that? I don't remember. <laughs> I, I made it, I made a few changes. Because it was getting spammed at some points. Hold on. Viewer. It's not re channel points, that's right. Hydrates. No, it's it's two per stream, max of ten uh for the entire stream. And then it has a redemption cooldown of ten minutes. That's right. That's right. Okay, so this also just explodes, which is fine. All right, so I think you have to, or I guess there is no way to runtime load then. Oh, not this one. This, this does have a few errors though. Loading model, and then when we get to loading model, then we just explode. So what are custom commands? So they actually correspond to these commands here. So you can do, ba, 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 ba. 
That's, no, that's, that's not it. That, those are emotes. Here, okay. Custom command. So there's jump. Makes them all jump. So that corresponds to the jump chat command. Well, not ch chat command, but reward or whatever. You can do chonk. They'll make you slightly bigger. <laughs> so because this is written in with Godot, it's just... I want to say it just adds or subtracts 0.1 scale, which means that you can actually do small several times to make yourself very small. And then eventually you'll just turn upside down. I don't remember why this happens sometimes. But doing that, you can turn yourself upside down like that. Like that. So pretty much everything that you can see here, except for reset scale. Reset scale is only for me. Yeah, but you can make yourself infinitely big. You can also like type in duck to duckify yourself. Randomize to randomize the character, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. I guess I'm just not able to runtime load. Yeah. Interesting. Registered extension unregistered GLTF extension. They're pretty big, so like uh, <laughs> like I said, I can I can actually do this. By the way, what a waste. <laughs> Conk. Conk does not actually show up. See, you can be, you can, you can make yourself really small if you just type in small. <laughs> yes, do, do not abuse it. Your channel points are not safe here. Reset scale. No, reset scale is the only one that does not, uh, that's not actually hooked up. Hilariously enough. It's it's not hooked up. <laughs> it's not hooked up. I believe if you want to look at the commands, it's called friendly potato. Yeah, friendly potato stream. Um, I'm trying to remember. What did I even do? I think I called it chat minions. Yeah, that's right. That's what I call it, chat minions. I don't know why I called it that. Yeah. So here are the list of commands. <laughs> like that. So there's jump, randomize, and then custom command, and then it's just a really, really inefficient search. So actually what you can do is like jump, chunk, random, like that. So you can you can hit a few things all at the same time. Which might be expected, might be unexpected. Anyways. I guess I'll need to report this as a bug because you're not able to load stuff in at runtime. And then also because There's no like error log, it just kind of explodes. Something like that. <clears throat> yeah, chonk. Well, see, yeah, adding more chonks all at the same time doesn't work, right? Because of the this code here, I only process it once. <laughs> I only process it once. And this co the code is pretty bad as well. Lots of things are like, really tightly coupled, which is unfortunate. 
Did I accidentally close this? No, it's still here. All right, you're you're too big. I'm sorry. You can you can still be chonky, <laughs> but you can be like an appropriate level of chonk. Okay, yeah. I think I'll just need to file a bug report. I guess I'll do that now. <laughs> Why not? New issue. Oh baby, I love writing creating issues. So I'm loading causes crash. My, I'm not allowed to add labels, but it is Godot 4. Hmm. The res. What is it? This is VRM samples. VRM. Not relevant. Well, we're updating the example, trying to a model at runtime causes into uh to exit with no errors when generating a scene something like that <laughs> using that code they can have that for free Explodes here. That's big enough. All right. Well, we'll keep it for now. <laughs> Although, usually my metric for determining if you're too big is if you're bigger than the duck, then you're too big. Okay, I think that's fine, right? That looks pretty good. I don't know. Send it. Ah, the real UN. Why not just add a scale cap though? Ah, uh, because that would require me to update even more stuff. I have, I have a lot of projects in flight. I, I, I don't have time to update everything. There's too many things. There's too many things. I, I, ah, Cause I need to manage everything myself. <sighs> All right, let's see. GLTF document. GLTF document's the one with generates scene in it, right? I'm currently being covered by the, the big duck. All right, is it called generate scene node or generate scene? Generate scene node? This is generate scene node is not the one that's exp yeah that's right it's not the one that's exported. A generate scene is, which is this one. So let's see. Where would this ever explode? <sighs> yeah. I think if I wanted to debug this properly, I would need to. I would need to um. I would need to compile a debug build and then attach a debugger. 
Or maybe I can just have one of um, those peoples, one of the authors, take a look and maybe I'm just a crazy person. Can you see the duck? Is it on a different screen? I can see me, right? Because I have my OBS preview window up here, so I, I can see it. <laughs> which is how I know if you're too big or not, right? Because this is actually not to scale, by the way. You, you might have realized it. Because it's just an, an OBS scene that's overlaid with a green screen. Because there used to be a few characters before I accidentally deleted all the files. <laughs> like, yeah, the this Gyozen one. is actually... Uh, benefits or actually is a detriment with the green screen but uh, i don't know what am i talking about <laughs> isn't transparency is more intensive yeah that's basically it root nodes hold on wait a minute Root nodes, GLTF, P state, root nodes, right. Get seen node, GL. What is this doing? So, root nodes is some sort of. Oh, right, it's like a handle. That's right, okay. I only make release builds. Calano makes debug. Why not just make the background invisible? Yeah, it's because apparently transparency... Yeah, 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 transparency is slower than just using a green screen. Because with transparency, I think what has to happen is that your your compositor... So on Linux, that's the... <laughs> on Linux, it matters. On Windows, you only have the, the Windows compositor. But your the, the compositor needs to check what's behind the current window and then paste it back onto the here. <laughs> Which is how transparency works, apparently. Is that it? It lo it it basically pretends like your window does not exist. Takes a screenshot and then just pastes it back into your window. So it's it's fairly fast, but it's not as fast as like not doing that. Which is why I use the green screen. Okay. Sometimes with blur, yeah. Sometimes with blur, but that's that's even more intensive yeah if you have like a conky config or something on linux is conky do people still use conky or is there another thing conky is that what it's called <laughs> no it's not conky what what is what's the other thing um what is it called pycom No, that's, that's a compositor, right? But there, isn't there, there's another one that you would usually use for just adding random blur without completely switching out your compositor? I thought it was called Conky, but it, it might not be called that. Oh, Compton! Compton! Oh, but Compton's no longer maintained. Okay, never mind. Yeah, I said Conky, it's Compton. <laughs> but I guess Compton is also a compositor, so who turns out I'm wrong? I don't know. <laughs> I just install what other people install. When we're making things look nice at the very least. It's a compositor. Yeah, yeah. I didn't realize that they were the same thing. Pycom is Compton. Hmm, I don't really know. I don't want to compile a debug build. <laughs> and even if it, other people have debug builds, I don't, I don't know how to attach a debugger. <laughs> I, I, I know how to attach a debugger in Rust. <laughs> Anyways, this doesn't work. How disappointing. I guess we'll just go back. Because there's nothing here that looks explicitly wrong, right? I can't really think 
of anything that would cause this to explode. Yeah, because I've, I've also have all, I have all the debug logs, but it, you know, no, nothing really happened. It's all when we hit the generate scene bit. The oh, VRM models do not apparently work. Don't you, I, I do compile, but I only compile editor and release builds. I saw his better tracebacks. No, it does not. <laughs> For sure it does not. Well, almost certainly it does not. I don't know, maybe it does. Where is it? Import VRM. So this is their VRM importer. So this is what they're doing, but I guess I can look at VRM extension. So this is import post. But then this is already like, um, wait a minute, wait a minute, import post, wait, what? Import, <laughs> what is this? <laughs> what? What the heck? This, sh this shouldn't make a difference. Just don't strip your release builds. I got bad news. Well, I got good news for you. I do strip my release builds. <laughs> okay. Kalino has debug builds. Kalino Godot builds. Yeah. I don't know. I, I need I need to to know. Hugo. It's not guaranteed. Yes, give me this one. We'll take a look. Just don't. Well, release builds should be stripped. Editor builds and debug builds don't need to be stripped. Because like, uh, like if you strip your, your release builds, they get like really, really small. Whereas I used to not strip release builds for V popper. They were 200 megs. I stripped them and now they're only, I don't know. What are they now? I think these ones might not be stripped. No, they are. Yeah. They're a bit better. <laughs> they're not great. Yeah. yeah, 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 see? They used to be 300 mags, actually, and then I started stripping the builds. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Look at that. From 300 to 180. It's not me. I don't know. But also, the last beta, or the last alpha, was forever ago. Yeah, I don't know. But this is the last thing. I'm just a little confused as to what this is. So like, what does it do? Did I accidentally close out of this? No, I, I'm still here. Import post. Oh, does this not have an import post? Or is there an import post? See. By the way, this is why I I do the the thing that I do. I have the like the built-in functions thing and I try to organize my functions well. Cuz now when I go into VRM ext extension, I just don't know where anything is. Like there's apply retarget, but I, I apparently apply retarget is used outside of this file, but there's import post which uh, doesn't really make a lot of sense to me as to why this is here. Unless, no, import post is one of the required ones, is not a custom one. Uh, okay. See, it, it's so hard for me to read their code. It doesn't make any sense to me. Hmm. 
export post, import post, import pre-flight, parse node extensions. I don't know, man. Is my download finished? Okay. All right, so these are debug builds apparently, so I will give it a try. Why not? So we'll close this just in case there's like some sort of conflict. I don't expect there to be. It's very slow though. Look at that. All right, so. How do I check what kind of build it is? Is this a debug build or what? I don't know. Do I show up under donors? I guess I don't. Yeah, what the heck? I'm a I'm a mini donor. I'm a mini sponsor. Eh. Whatever. <laughs> Maybe they only updated for releases. Did I not click on it, by the way? Am I crazy? Eh? <laughs> what? Is it just not running? No, it is running. It's just very, very... S mm, hold on. That's the launcher. Stream intro screen. Nope. These are all correct. Those are things I do mean to be running. Eh? There's Steam. Hmm, the heck? Maybe this nightly just doesn't work? I don't wanna, I don't have time to compile. Is it able to load anything else? Or is this build just kind of borked? Okay, I guess this build is just kind of borked. But that means I can open up. I can open up the VRM project. Okay, so just get, get out of here. Oh my god, it's so slow. Yeah, I have no idea why it's not able to open vpupper. But we can open up this one. That works for me, last nightly. I don't know. It's not able to open vpupper for whatever reason. Maybe there's just too many assets. Here's a warning. I have no idea what the warning says. Add-ons. That's fair. Internal error, that's good. So in theory, this should work. I don't know. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Ooh, 58 errors. That's good. This is actually the wrong one. Load at runtime scene. Oh, I actually have a newer build. Invalid call. Is this not the most recent one? OK, so it just explodes. Is this a really, really old one? Actually, what build do I have? Eh. This must be a really old build. Eh. No, this, this must be a really, really old build. This doesn't make any sense. I recognize this because I, I, I was looking at it before, but CV Popper doesn't have the same, um, the same issue. So if I load this in, takes a little bit. 
and we look at uh, GLTF. Where is it? Yeah, see, these, these are very, very different. Uh, I don't think that you would assume that there's a difference. It would only take, no, it will take a lot longer than three seconds, almost guaranteed. Considering that it takes me, I don't know, a few minutes to compile, because I've never compiled a debug build before. Because it's not usually something I need to do. Yeah, I guess I can, though. I don't want to. All right, where's Godot for? Um, build required. What was it? It's, it's called debug. Scons. I don't know. What are the, what are the lists again? I don't remember. Debug builds. It's already cached. I don't remember. <laughs> Our editor builds already debug. What? Okay, hold on. Cat. Or I guess less construct. What are the things? Where are the options? Uh, targets. Dev build, so I want dev build. I want an editor dev build. Is that what I want? No, just target editor. See, no, that, that is what I'm using. I, I am using target editor. But then I just, I just need to have dev build true. Right, so scons, target. Or I guess dev. Nah, well, hold on. Dev mode. Wait, no. Dev build underscore. All right, well, let's see how fast it is. If this like completely borks it, I'm gonna have to turn it off. Oh geez, get it out. <laughs> I can't use all my threads. I need several threads to continue streaming. So we'll just use four threads. Yeah, see, it's, it's, it's recompiling everything because I, I never compile with debug symbols. I think debugs, yeah, debug symbols is already true by default. At least going by the the S construct. Yeah, so this is this is going to take a few minutes. Hmm. I don't really know. There must be something to do, or it must have something to, well, I just realized I haven't updated Godot VRM in a little while, in a little while. Godot. Nope. <laughs> nope, I am completely up to date. That's not good. Godot. So to turn on debug symbols on Windows. Well, the S construct says that it should be fine. Right. Like the, the default option is true, right? Yeah, debug symbols, build with debugging symbols defaults to true. So even if I were to pass in specifically, you know, debug symbols true, 
it, it doesn't make a difference. Because the defaults are true. You actually need to opt into turning it off. Oh, and there, there's my own stuff. I actually still have a pending PR. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. Working for this long and then just kind of having it explode on you is kind of a downer. And the fact that it was not ported forward to Gideo 4, even though I did have it working, by the way, this used to work. That's how uh, VPUPPER and Gideo 3 works. Let me see. At least for like the standard stuff, it's fine, right? As long as I don't click on this, if I click on this, it'll explode. If I click on this, I'll get like a little pop-up. <laughs> a little pop-up, which is nice. Here, we load in, we get a shadow. How nice. Ooh. And then also, sometimes this happens where it steals my input from me, but I don't know why that happens. Yeah. All right, let's turn off like debug logging because I don't, I don't need like super logging at least for this. Max functions. Is it done yet? No. Uh... Anyways, runner selection. When it starts a runner, how does this work again? So runner selection. Ba, 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 ba. Is this one? It's on clicked. Hmm. End stream. Yeah, I'm thinking about it. Honestly, I am thinking about it. <laughs> uh, it's, that is uh, quite a kick in the teeth, for sure. Good, good, good first stream of the year coming back. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm just gonna push whatever I have then, I guess. Skado VRM is clearly borked. Where me, I'm maybe maybe just runtime loading in general is borked. In which case, I don't really know what I'm going to do. Honestly, I think I, if runtime loading is completely borked in general, then I'll need to, I'm gonna need to recompile a Godot to make it work again. I hate doing that. I don't want to recompile Godot. It's kind of a pain. I guess maybe GD extensions, but uh, I don't really hate writing C++. We'll think about it. We'll think about it. But let's let's push these. Actually, 3D models probably should not be pushed unless I have the license for now. So I guess I'll just commit whatever I have here. So get commits. Add loading to runner handler. So we'll push that, and then we'll just leave the 3D models here for now. GD extensions don't have to be C++. Yeah, but like C++ is really the only usable one right now. So like there is Rust, but like it's not usable. I, I don't know what you would want me to do with the Rust one. I think you can only pass primitives. So you can pass, you can pass bytes and that's all you can do right now with the Rust one. So you, yeah, you can pass numbers you can get bytes and then like pass them back to Godot and then get a string back, I think. But I, I'm not aware of any other GD extension languages. Like I'm, I'm very comfortable with writing, well, I'm more comfortable with writing Rust. <laughs> Let's say that. Anyways, thanks for tuning in. I'll be live, uh, what day is today? I'll be live on Tuesday from seven to 10 p.m. Eastern time working on this again. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, there is a Discord somewhere. I usually have a bot, but the bot is uh, being rewritten. Still needs to be redeployed. I have a lot of stuff to do. Yeah. Uh, 
And I will see you later, I suppose. Goodbye. Your, your chunks. Just, just, to, just to get you one more time. <laughs> Got him. Goodbye.